Hello, this is an informedtrades.com introduction to the variable moving average. Uh, the VMA was developed in 1995 by Tushar Chande as an update to his earlier variable index dynamic average indicator, or the VIDYA. And both of these indicators are unique among moving averages in that they adjust their smoothing constant based on a calculus of market volatility. So different data is emphasized depending on how volatile the market is. Whereas Vidya uses standard deviation to determine volatility, the VMA uses values derived from Chande's own momentum oscillator. Uh, when the volatility reading is high, as in the case of an emerging trend, the VMA becomes more sensitive or faster, emphasizing recent data. By contrast, uh, when volatility is lower, as in a trending market, data is weighted more evenly to allow easier recognition of an emerging long-term trend. As a result of this, the VMA can adapt better to both the trading range and to the possibility of trend reversals versus other moving averages with more fixed formulas. The variable moving average is a lot simpler to calculate on paper than its cousin, the variable index dynamic average. Uh, the VMA value is, is determined by multiplying alpha times the volatility index times the current close plus 1 minus alpha times the volatility index times the previous period's VMA value, where alpha equals 2 divided by n plus 1 and N is the user-selected smoothing period. The volatility index value is derived from the absolute value of the Chande momentum oscillator, uh, dividing by 100, or just skipping the step built into the oscillator of multiplying by 100. Uh, so VI equals the absolute value of SU minus SD divided by SU plus SD, where SU is the sum of the difference between the current close and previous closes on days uh, within the selected period with a positive or upwards price movement, whereas SD is the sum of the difference between the current close and previous closes on days with a negative or downwards price movement within the selected period. Uh, and the typical period is nine days. So the crucial concept when interpreting the variable moving average is that most moving averages cannot adjust the span or the weight of periods considered in the way that the VMA does uh, based on the volatility index. So the VMA is a very useful counterpoint to averages with fixed periods. The basic idea behind this sort of use is that in times of market congestion, as in the trading range, the VMA will slow down to avoid whipsaws, whereas in times of trend, it will speed up so as to be more sensitive to potential changes in trend direction. As a result, the VMA works within a developing trend to counterweight slower or longer range averages, and it works well in a ranging trend to counterweight faster or shorter range averages. It's important to set and experiment with your n value, since a higher n will result in an exponentially slower VMA. The VMA is probably most effective in times of fluctuating volatility, since other averages will not be able to adapt. The indicator works well in the context of a traditional three-period crossover trading scheme with three moving averages moving with respect to different periods or, or even different end values. In this context, uh, a buy signal occurs when a shorter period average or lower end value average crosses a longer period or higher end value average from below, whereas sell signals come when a shorter period or higher end value average crosses a longer period average from above. As far as the relationship between price action and these averages, long positions are signaled when price is above the averages, implying support, and short positions are signaled when price is below the averages, implying resistance. And as with all moving averages, it's a bad idea to consider the VMA in a vacuum without regard to price action. 
Although it has a variable range, it's still a lagging indicator, just like any other moving average. So here is an example from Forex that shows the VMA in purple versus simple moving averages in blue and dark green and an exponential moving average in light green. It's clear that the VMA hues a lot closer to price action. Uh, as a trend occurs and builds momentum, the VMA gets faster and faster in anticipation of a redirection or a possible one. Uh, as we can see here in the speedy turnaround during the trend reversal in early June. As the opposing trend builds, the VMA perceives the market as less volatile at first and then speeds up as the trend solidifies until another turning point here in early July. We can see that because of its close adherence to price action, the VMA is typically the first crossover among the moving averages, uh, crossing the exponential moving average from above in late May to signal a downtrend or sell, and crossing all three averages in June to signal the reversal of that same downtrend. Uh, we can see that the VMA is most sensitive to these reversals uh, and also an early indicator of these developing trends. All right, this has been an introduction to variable moving averages. If you've got any questions or knowledge to share, come join us in our learning community at informtrades.com. Thanks for watching and good luck in your trading.